everybody, Dr. Emily here from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about why is it so difficult to engage short foot when you have bunions. Now for anyone who has attended any EBFA education, they know that I am a huge fan of short foot exercise. The reason why I like short foot exercise is that it's one of the best exercises to activate the intrinsics within the foot, as well as to activate what is called foot to core sequencing. So we actually tap into the pelvic floor and the deep hip stabilizers through the bottom of the foot. This is done through coactivation patterns, joint coupling, as well as myofascial lines. So for those who have been implementing short foot with your clients, athletes, and patients, you may have started to notice that those who have the bunions actually have a little bit harder time engaging or finding this activation exercise. And go into exactly why. So first we must understand the anatomy. So if we look at the center picture here, we can see this muscle here. This muscle is the abductor hallucis. That's actually the muscle that you're targeting when you do short foot exercise. Right next to that muscle here is another intrinsic muscle, which is referred to as the flexor hallucis brevis. Now this muscle, very similar to our gastrocnemius, has two heads. It has a medial head and a lateral head. There's two things that make this muscle very unique. First thing is that there are two small bones that lie within the tendon of this muscle. These two small bones are referred to as your sesamoids. They act like a lever, almost like our patella or our kneecap. So the two sesamoids run within the tendons of this flexor hallucis brevis. Second thing that is unique about this muscle is that it actually shares a tendon with our abductor hallucis. So abductor hallucis, muscle we target with short foot, shares a tendon with the medial belly of the flexor hallucis brevis. That's very important when we start thinking about the activation of short foot. This tendon is referred to as the conjoint tendon, so it's one tendon. You activate one muscle, you essentially are activating the other secondarily. So as far as what happens when we have bunions, as let me just close this here, Anytime we look at x-rays or a patient who might have a bunion is that we want to factor in what's called sesamoid position. Now, if we're thinking about function, what sesamoid position should tell you is essentially the position of the flexor hallucis brevis or ultimately the position of the abductor hallucis. On this side, we have a normal foot or a normal sesamoid position. We can see that the two sesamoids are sitting directly underneath the head of the first metatarsal. This means that the muscles that control the great toe or the second MPJ are in good alignment. This foot would be able to activate short foot or the abductor hallucis in an expected normal fashion. Now if we look at this x-ray, we can see that the sesamoids are actually shifted to the side. There's a lateral deviation of the sesamoids. Now what that lateral deviation does is that it pulls the flexor hallucis brevis laterally, but we know that the flexor hallucis brevis shares a tendon or has a conjoint tendon with the abductor hallucis. So in this foot, what we see is that the abductor hallucis has actually been pulled underneath the foot and has shifted to a more lateral position. In a normal foot x-ray, the abductor hallucis is in what's called a transverse plane. It's a transverse plane muscle. In a bunion that has a lateral deviation of the sesamoids, the abductor hallucis is now shifted from the transverse plane rolled underneath the first metatarsal head and is now a sagittal plane muscle. That's going to make it very difficult for this foot to activate short foot. So what can you do as a professional who integrates short foot into your practice is you can do different techniques to try and abduct that digit and get a little bit of lateral, I apologize, a little bit of a medial deviation of those sesamoids. You can do some sort of rock tape or kinesiology taping where you would abduct the helix back to that center line position. You could do a product that's called bunion booty huge fan of that product. It slips onto the toe and again, pulls the toe over towards the midline. You could do toe socks, toe spacers, happy feet. There's a bunch of different products that try to bring that big toe out into that normal position. Part of bunion surgery is to reposition those sesamoids. So if any of your clients are considering having bunion surgery, it may actually be advantageous because you get a more normal sesamoid position.